Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for dropping by. Well, I've got a fantastic target for you to find tonight, and uh, it's one of the deep sky type of targets. Now, deep sky targets are just the fainter type of targets, such as the uh, nebulas and your galaxies. Um, now, tonight's one is M5, and it's one of my favorite type of uh, deep sky targets, and that is a cluster. Well, it's a special type of cluster, and that is a globular cluster. Now, as the probably obvious in the title, what a globular cluster is, is a bit, basically a big condensed ball of stars containing several thousands of stars. And uh, they really do look nice in the telescope. Now, another very popular uh, globular cluster that you may have heard of is M13, the great uh, Hercules globular cluster. Well, in my opinion, M5 is just as spectacular and just as pretty to look through the telescope as M13. And it does tend to get overlooked. Um, and I think the reason being is there's not a lot of going on uh, where M13 is situated, sorry, where M5 is situated in the sky. Uh, in other words, there's not a lot of other stars that you can go easily star hopping of. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a plain area of the sky. But you know me, I've, with my little system, I've got a, a pretty foolproof system of finding this lovely little target. Now, you will be able to see M5 uh, with any small telescope or even binoculars. Uh, of course, the larger the telescope you have in aperture, the more of the individual stars you're going to see. Well, with that being said, let's uh, go and quickly have a look of how to just find M5. And uh, trust me, guys, with this little system I've got, you're going to have no trouble at all. Okay, to find M5, a good starting point is Arcturus in boots, booties, booties, however you want to pronounce it. It really doesn't matter. Don't worry about pronunciation when it comes to astronomy. Um, now, Arcturus is a very bright, um, yellowy, orangey star in the western sky at the moment. It is getting quite low, but there is still plenty of time to see um, M5. Don't worry. Um, so once you've identified Arcturus, what I want you to do is just start to move into uh, south uh, a little bit. And what we're trying, what you want to be looking for is uh, the snake or the serpent. Um, and you can see it there highlighted. Now, if I just move in a little bit, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Uh, by the way, this uh, software I'm using here is Stellarium. I'll leave a link to uh, that in the description below. Okay, so serpents. Now, this constellation is faint. It's a very faint constellation. So make sure that your eyes are well dark adapted uh, to, to really start to bring this constellation out. Uh, but one distinctive uh, feature of this constellation is this little triangulation of stars here. Now, if once you've identified that little triangle or the head of the snake, if you like, we're going to follow it down the body to this next star then across to these two stars here, and finally, the, the last star. Now, the two stars that are very important to find in uh, M5 are this star and this star here. These two stars. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, it's important that you don't get that star mixed up with that star when doing this little method I'm going to show you next. Uh, next, It's these two stars that are very important. Now, if you were to put a, an imaginary star where you think there's a perfect equilateral triangle, so if I put one, I would say, round about there, as you can see from these two stars to your imaginary dot, it makes a perfect triangle. That's where you need to be pointing your telescope. Um, you'll find that once you do that, if I just bring up the um, the deep sky targets, uh, bear with me one minute. I'll twist that off. And as you can see, look, that little triangle that we've just made, that imaginary triangle, is almost perfectly where M5 is, the globular cluster. Have fun with this one, folks. Use this system, and uh, I'm sure you're going to have no trouble finding it. 
One thing to remember when you're doing these uh, triangulations, if you like, in the sky, uh, they, they often look a lot smaller on paper, so to speak, than they do when you're actually out there under the night sky. Um, for instance, this triangle you're going to make, it, you know, it's quite a big track. It's not massive, but it's it looks a lot bigger in the sky. So just be aware of that. But just don't forget, just take those two indicating stars to give you your, your dimensions of the triangle. Another key tip when using this triangulation method is to always have your telescope roughly at your side and pointing to where uh, you think the target is. Um, and having the finder scope and doing the triangulation with your eye right close to the finder scope. This way, you're not doing the triangulation method and finding your, your, your imaginary point in, in the sky and then looking at your telescope. By the time you've looked at your telescope, you've lost that that little point, pinpoint. So remember to, to, to always do the triangulation with your find a dot, if you like, even that, even better still. So you can, you, you know where you are then. And straight away, you can get to the eyepiece and do any fine adjustments you may need to do. Well, best of luck finding this lovely little globular cluster. Don't forget, guys, to like, share, subscribe, all the rest of it. Especially hit that thumbs up button. It really does help a small channel like mine out massively, more than you'll ever know. So in the meantime, folks, go and find yourself a globular cluster, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.